Hello and welcome to Pocket of Inspiration where we create better versions of ourselves. In this episode, we have three brilliant young ladies. We have Farnaz, Stephanie, and Ariana. And they are part of the STEM Guyana team who represented our country in the first global robotics challenge. And they made our country proud. They were placed 10th position out of 164 teams from around the world. So girls, thank you for being here. For those who might not know what STEM Guyana is, can you tell us more about this thing? Mm -hmm. STEM Guyana, which is STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics, it's a non-governmental organization that was founded by Ms. Karen Abrams and her, and her children back in July 2016. And it was, um, it was supported by both local and international, uh, both at the local and international level. And it's all started with the conducting of one robotic camp that which impacted the lives of many students, including myself. And thus we became we, we became involved in robotics. So STEM Guyana they have their goal which is unlocking the world class potential of Guyanese youths. And since last year they've been they've been doing that. And of course we have our upcoming leagues which we're trying to roll out, which is our, the robotics league, the programming league and the math league. And it all aims about impacting the life of students and making us all become a better version of ourselves. Great. Yeah. So what sparked your interest in robotics? Because robotics is somewhat new to Guyana. So what sparked your interest in this field? I was introduced to robotics by Parnas through the YouTube Robotics um, Club. And I started off, uh, it's new, and I just wanted to educate myself a little more of it. And then uh, being a part of the team and starting to work with actually hands-on experience, I just developed a passion for it. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, what's part of the interest I'm always looking for new skills to develop, mm -hmm. and it was an opportunity for me to learn new robotics. Since it was something new, we introduced to Vietnam, I was not so. Okay. Well, for me, what sparked my interest in robotics, that's like a story. So it started since in 2012 when I realized that I also want to become like a doctor and I kind of realized that I can't handle blood that much and I was like, so since I can't operate on humans, I'll operate on machines and since then I started to research about machines and engineering and robotics and that's when I actually loved, I started to get into the field of robotics and um, after that I did, a, I did a lot of online courses and I started research a lot and I was like, okay, the next step for me is to gain a in a degree and, and so I had to choose between an engineering course and computer science because not only is robotic hardware wise it's also software wise and that's why I choose to go pursue my degree in computer science and from then on I try to get as many people as involved so because I that, that sparked my interest and I realized that a little too late for me it was a little too late but then that's why I, I started to um, did all my outreaches and I started the, the, the clubs at university to get the, the message out there, to invite others and for them to be more involved. Okay. All right. So when you decided to go into robotics, what were you expecting when you went into this lecture? And what really happened? Well, we actually, um, I went in expecting to learn new skills and improve a critical thinking or whatever. And Eventually, um, during that process, I um, got invited to be a part um, of the team preparing, not mm -hmm. of the actual team, the official team. So, you, um, working along and being there every day, and just that passion for robotics, um, I eventually got chosen for the team. Mm -hmm. So that was like a really great opportunity for me. Okay, cool. My expectation when I was in some of robotics was to build a robot, but not only that, I was also had an interest in the programming aspect of it. So I didn't expect to get that far in different programming objects involved in not only building the robot, but to be able to do the What were the greatest lessons you've learned being a part of this venture of the robotics system? Well, I would start to say um, the cooperation. Mm -hmm. Cooperation is one of the main things we have learned a lot because I mean, for the team that was selected, one of the things that we um, that was really focused on was it because Guyana is a culture diverse country. Mm -hmm. We wanted students from all across Guyana, and that's what um, 
STEM Guyana, when they first started it, they tried to get as many um, students as involved because they extended the issue to the to GTI, to the University of Guyana. So even the students who did the, um, the camp last year, and when we all came together, we all have like different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So we actually, all of us had to learn to work along with each other to uh, overcome our differences and contribute to whichever field that we, that we were already part of, but at the same time learn new trade, learn new, um, learn new skills to be part of this team. Team. We knew as much as we had the skill, whatever we knew, all of us must be together, which we can do. But robotics is not a like program alone or hardware alone. There's different aspects of energy design, there's a hardware, software, electrical parts of it, and you may not be skilled in all of the areas. So you have to know how to cooperate. And for example, the competition, um, the cooperation was just not among enemies. It was with other countries, mm -hmm. so you made it to. Um, I think one of the really greatest achievement for this competition was learning how to um, cooperate, as David has said, um, with not only people from your country but other countries as well. Great. Okay, for young people who might be interested in the field of robotics, especially young girls, what would you say to them? But some of them might think, you know, what I'm not smart enough, or they have to be a geek or they might not believe in themselves to work on a such um, field. What would you say to them? Well, the first thing you should know is that um, we were not all born like this, but in order for you to really get started in something, you need to start researching in it, you need to start reading, and you need to, well, you want to naturally, well, the, the love for it won't come instant. But if you're, if you're focusing your research and you're focused like in, in actually like pursuing this, mm -hmm. then you should research on it. And there's no such thing as smart enough because every day it's a learning day and every child every day brings a new challenge and it's a learning process. And especially for our girls, I mean, Ariane can I like be more um, being someone new in the field, the how the how it was. Well, for me, um, being always a ways, I never really pursued anything that of the world. It was just A's and B's all the same. Mm -hmm. And then after being involved in robotics, I saw that we didn't need like a particular subject or a, a educate, um, a education area or, or anything of this um, sort. It's just like financial research and like continue practicing whatever you may have learned over the like, days, not, not even years or months, mm -hmm. just days. Mm -hmm. and, basically pursuing um, your research and that's the most important thing. For me, like we all say, you get to be a mama, be unique, right? There are a lot of opportunities out there. For me, in my case, I always have to think of the ones because if you have a in one area, that's why you need it. So it's nice to try new things, it's nice to be adventurous because you never want to be a it's nice to take that chance. That's good. Okay, for those who might be interested in robotics, how can they really get started? You said start with research. Um, do they have to go to a university? Is that a, that's not a major requirement. No, right? it's not. Um, and if, are there groups or stuff that they could log on the website? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, we are, each one of us are computer science students, yes, but before that, I mean, we're all just students, and you, and even though you're a student, if you're in school or you're out of school, and research, we all have the devices in our hands and devices in our life, and we can use that to learn. And the, the STEM Guyana, they are planning to roll out different leagues and form different STEM clubs around Guyana, but for that to happen, it will happen quite gradually because they'll need like resources and so on for that to happen. But so there's STEM Guyana, and they're trying to roll out the STEM clubs. But then there's also um, we form the Uju Robotics Club, and that's also open to anyone. But um, that that's where you, even if you don't meet people like instantly who's who's in the field and want to, to help contribute to your idea or what's not, you can reach out to us there, and we have uh, the Facebook page and website and so on. Yeah, STEM Guyana website, and there's also the, the Facebook page that you can um, reach out to there. You can message there and, and contact there. All right, so any final remarks before last question? Well, yeah. Um, well, Team Vienna, when we started in April, we had to, uh, there was a lot of people who supported us, especially, well, our major mentor was Miss Karen Abrams, and then we, we got support, I from the First Lady of Vienna, Ms. Andrew Granger, and 
We also had a lot of um, support. Well, thanks to Christopher Jones for um, giving us his support for the, our clubhouse of device and sports all. Minister of, uh, Minister of Telecommunication had the huge. But then also there was a lot of support um, behind the scenes, like of course the diaspora, which um, not only is it international but also local. So we would like to thank everyone who supported us and um, who had who had believed in us. Well, there are many different projects that we're trying to develop. Some of them are like again, we're watching kids for different um, STEM clubs. And it's basically about the resources. And if you are interested in STEM and you can afford to go there, support in any way, uh, monetary, buying any kind of resources that you think might help with these STEM clubs, um, feel free to contribute. Contact STEM Vienna. Um, at, at, there's a Facebook page and at um, semiac.com and you can contribute any um, type of donation or whatever you feel you can. And STEMIANA, one of the main vision behind it or the motto of STEMIANA is unlocking the world class potential of Chinese youth and we all aim for that. Thus, um, thus we're in the progress of rolling out our coding league or robotic league and also the math league and we, we, we hope that these leagues with the support from, from everyone out there who, who are already supporting us, but even more, that these leagues will reach every student out there and it will help the students them in every aspect of their lives. Okay, thank you. So before our last question, I would like to thank you all for being here. And you've made a country proud. I trust that you guys will continue to work hard and to do your best. I wish you all the best in your studies. Thank you. Right? So the last question is, what do you think is the single most core value for creating the best version of yourself? Well, one of my quotes that I always live by, well, every morning I get up and think about it, is that behind every great success, there was a greater sacrifice. Mm -hmm. There was a greater sacrifice. And in order for you to really achieve something, you need to get out and go for it. There's no success will come to you gradually. You'll have to get up every morning, get out of your bed, and really make a plan of what you really want to achieve today, what you really want to achieve for the next three or five years. And if you really, you first need to start to believe in yourself, and then you need to start work towards a goal. Set one, it doesn't have to be one goal, you don't have to dream one dream. Dream as big as you can, set as many goals as you can, but uh, but you need to make the sacrifices in order for them to happen. Great. For me, that's everyone I get up, I'll look at myself. This is my competition. I myself, right? I tell myself that. And you need to love yourself, and it's fine to say, believe in yourself that you can conquer anything. And every day you're lying. So you try to evaluate yourself, see what more you can learn. Did I miss anything? And good. Great. For me, it's actually loving yourself enough to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's not only believing in yourself, but it's believing that where you are is it's where you become. Because people see that they are okay, they don't have the degree as if they're only in for a year and they're not getting good grades or whatnot. It's basically you're on your path to where you, wherever you want to become, basically. So it's basically about loving yourself enough to improve yourself. So it's not okay, I am confident in myself, I'm going to stick here. Mm -hmm. It's loving yourself more than that, that you're going to continue to improve your skills, whether um, your physical body, your mental state of mind, and all those things. And one of the uh, quotes that I've actually shared with my team when we were in Washington was that they're all unique, they're all innovators and dreamers and thinkers and problem solvers, but at the same time, they are a good version of themselves but they can be better and every day you try to be better. So be you, but be a better version of you every day. Great, thank you so much. Yeah. So I want to thank you all for watching. I trust that you really found the value in what was said here. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I want to thank you once more for watching. Remember this was Pocket of Inspiration. Stay true to yourself and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.